For the last three nights, we have been quoting the sworn declaration of a former executive for Z, XE, the former for a company formerly called Blackwater, in which that executive describes a nearly global enterprise shot through with criminality, arms dealing, fraud, tax evasion, child prostitution, murder, all of which Z denies even in cases where its employees have already pleaded guilty. One motive for all this, the four-year executive claims, was greed. Tonight, in our third story, the other motive was God. Jeremy Scahill, who first broke this story for The Nation magazine, wrote the definitive book on Blackwater in which he details some of the theocratic connections of founder Eric Prince. Now that former Blackwater executive, known only as John Doe No. 2, claims that Prince did more than subscribe to a fundamentalist Christian ideology. He used Z to advance it. Quote, Mr. Prince is motivated to engage in misconduct by two factors. First, he views himself as a Christian crusader tasked with eliminating Muslims and the Islamic faith from the globe. To that end, Mr. Prince intentionally deployed to Iraq certain men who shared his vision of Christian supremacy, knowing and wanting these men to take every available opportunity to murder Iraqis. Many of these men used call signs based on the Knights of the Templar, the warriors who fought the Crusades. As a young man, Eric Prince was an intern for the first President Bush and for the Family Research Council, the right-wing religious organization his father helped to start. He later complained about his White House internship. Quote, I saw a lot of things I did not agree with. Homosexual groups being invited in, the Budget Agreement, the Clean Air Act. A Catholic convert, Prince has donated more than a quarter of a million dollars to conservative Republican politicians, primarily the religious ones. He has used the wealth of his family and profits from Z to create and to fund numerous right-wing and or proselytizing Christian organizations, the Family Research Council, Christian Freedom International, and the Council on National Policy, whose meetings Prince said he has attended. That last group... The CNP was founded by this man, the Reverend Tim LaHaye, whose Left Behind series dramatizes his biblical beliefs that in the near future, Solomon's temple in Israel will be rebuilt. Jesus then returns, making true believers vanish away with him. Those left behind who accept Jesus battle the unbelievers. Mr. Prince's devout family values Christianity does not always manifest itself, however, in his behavior. After a Z, then Blackwater plane went down in Afghanistan. Prince argued that legal immunity pertained because companies cannot be sued for the actions of their employees under prevailing Afghanistan law, specifically the Islamic law of Sharia. Prince was interviewed by Suzanne Simons for a new book about him, a book that reports Prince cheated on his first wife, his dying first wife, with their nanny. Simons writes that the nanny attended the funeral while pregnant with Prince's child. Prince did, in his words, the right thing. He married the nanny. At Z, Prince has surrounded himself with like-minded believers, like the lobbyist Paul Behrens, board member of Christian Freedom International, and general counsel COO Joseph Schmitz. As inspector general at the Pentagon, Mr. Schmitz incorporated the phrase, always under the protection of the Almighty, into the official seal, and said, quote, we pride ourselves on our strict adherence to the rule of law under God. He spoke to the Order of Malta, a secretive Catholic group at the church of Paul Bremer, another conservative Catholic in the Bush administration. And Schmitz essentially exonerated U.S. General William Boykin for turning his mission missionary. <laughs> After even Republicans slammed Schmitz for shielding the White House from congressional scrutiny of Pentagon purchasing, Schmitz resigned and went to Blackwater. Schmitz not only spoke to the Order of Malta, he is a member. Scahill reports the order is, quote, a Christian militia formed in the 11th century before the First Crusades with the mission of defending territories that the Crusaders had conquered from the Muslims, territories familiar to theocratic minds. This crusade, this war on terrorism uh, is going to take a while. The Pentagon put Bible verses on its reports for Mr. Bush. Some of his soldiers spoke openly about distributing Bibles in Iraq and Afghanistan, spreading the word. Eric Prince once described Z employees this way. Quote, everybody carries guns just like Jeremiah rebuilding the temple in Israel, a sword in one hand, a trowel in the other. The temple that must be rebuilt for Jesus to return. Bush officials helped Prince advance his vision. State Department Inspector General Alvin Krongard killed a probe in disease weapon smuggling, then denied to Congress that his brother was on Z's advisory board. I specifically asked him 
I do not believe it is true that he is a member of the advisory board. During the break, I did contact my yes. brother. I reached him at home. He is not at the hotel, but I learned that he had been at the advisory board meeting yesterday. I had not been aware of that, and I want to state on the record right now that I hereby recuse myself from any matters having to do with Blackwater. Coalition Chief Paul Bremer, another counsel for national policy veteran, once said, I cannot succeed in this mission without the help of God, but he also needed Blackwater. He gave Prince his first big contract in Iraq. Bremer later wrote the Bremer order granting contractors in Iraq total legal immunity, and Z would need it. Quoting John T uh, Doe number 2's sworn declaration, Mr. Prince operated his companies in a manner that encouraged and rewarded the destruction of Iraqi life. For example, Mr. Prince's executives would openly speak about going over to lay Hajis out on cardboard. Going to Iraq to shoot and kill Iraqis was viewed as a sport or a game. A man whom Z called a disgruntled former employee put it this way. It's troubling when a group of Americans who are supposedly there to help in the rebuilding of a country consider those people to be less than they are, less human than they are. But is there any evidence that these attitudes reached the battlefield? We've told you that Prince sent his men illegal ammo engineered to detonate on contact with human flesh. Out of three State Department security contractors, Z fired first in its shootouts, more than any other firing first or being the only side to fire, in 84% of shooting incidents. July 1st, 2007, Z shooters allegedly opened up on a minibus taking three families to the airport, dead one nine-year-old boy, his father, his uncle, his mother, trying to shield her three-month-old daughter. The baby is also dead, shot in the face. February 7, 2007, Z snipers killed three Iraqi government security guards. Iraqi officials confront the shooters who then joke about it. The State Department defends Z without, according to the Washington Post reporting, interviewing witnesses nor examining the scene. Christmas Eve 2006, a drunken Blackwater employee kills an Iraqi vice president's bodyguard. CNN reports the State Department kept this out of the killer's personnel records. February 16, 2005, Z sprays an Iraqi car with more than 70 bullets, presumably killing the driver. The Z security detail is codenamed Templar 20. The State Department de determined Z lied about being fired on but punishes nobody. Quote, any disciplinary actions would be deemed as lowering the morale of contractors. Out of 195 shootings from 2005 to 2007, Z was fired upon first just 32 times. Z has denied wrongdoing and will reply in court to the allegations, the legal allegations against it, later this month. Today, a judge ruled on Z's request for a gag order. Gag order denied. The slaughter of civilians for sport, weapons smuggling, destruction of evidence, wholesale corruption, and finally murder. In our third story in the countdown, a full-fledged criminal enterprise executed by the military contractors, known formerly as Blackwater, according to the sworn testimony of two of its employees. The nation's Jeremy Scahill, who broke the story, joins us in a moment. The details come straight from two sworn affidavits filed late last night by persons whose identities have been sealed to protect their identity, men who have previously cooperated with federal prosecutors in the criminal inquiry into Blackwater. From John Doe number two, a former member of Blackwater's management team, quoting the affidavit, it appears that Mr. Eric Prince, Blackwater's founder, and his employees murdered or had murdered one or more persons who have provided information or who were planning to provide information to the federal authorities about the ongoing criminal conduct. On several occasions after my departure from Mr. Prince's employ, Mr. Prince's management has personally threatened me with death and violence. John, Do John Doe number two also stating that Mr. Prince, pictured here smuggled unlawful weapons into Iraq, including sawed-off semi-automatic machine guns with silencers and illegal hand grenades. And the affidavit also says that Prince, quote, views himself as a Christian crusader eliminating Muslims and the Islamic faith from the globe. To that end, Mr. Prince intentionally deployed to Iraq certain men who shared his vision of Christian supremacy. Many of these men used call signs based on the Knights of the Templar, the warriors who fought the Crusades. Mr. Prince operated his companies in a manner that encouraged and rewarded the destruction of Iraqi life, going to Iraq to shoot and kill Iraqis was viewed as a sport or game. Strikingly similar allegations made in the affidavit of John Doe number one, a former U.S. Marine who worked for Blackwater in Iraq. He alleged, uh, alleges that incidents of unjustified deadly force were initially videotaped and watched in a session called a hot wash. Blackwater, now known as Z Services, spelled X-E, maintains that Mr. Prince and the company are innocent of any wrongdoing and performed their duties on behalf of their employer, the State Department. Joining
joining me now, as promised, the contributor to The Nation magazine and author of Blackwater, The Rise of the World's Most Powerful Mercenary Army, Jeremy Scahill. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me back, Keith. As horrific as all this sounds, it's just part of what you described in the piece today. Flesh it out for us. Well, I mean, obviously, to uh, hear the term murder and Blackwater mm -hmm. in the same sentence is no great surprise, particularly to people who've been following the history of this company. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been at the center of some of the worst violence in Iraq, killing civilians repeatedly. Five of its men are going to be tried on manslaughter charges for the Nisar Square massacre in Baghdad in September of 07. Another one pled guilty. The Congress is investigating. The IRS is investigating. This is a scandal-plagued company. What is explosive about what's happened here, and you just uh, went through some of the most explosive of these uh, details, is that you have two former Blackwater officials. Mm -hmm. I, I have learned from sources that John Doe, number two, was actually in Blackwater management and was privy to some of the inner workings of the company. Eric Prince, the uh, owner of Blackwater, remains the sole owner of the company no matter that he stepped down as CEO and right. the founder of the company. He micromanages every aspect of Blackwater's operations, and that's been well known. On the Christian supremacist angle, let's remember that Eric Prince viewed Blackwater as a neo-crusader force and has from the beginning. This is a guy who comes from one of the powerhouse families of the radical religious right. His father was a major bankroller and gave the seed money to Gary Bauer to start the Family Research Council. Wow. James Dobson focused on the family. And then we have his forces deployed in Iraq as part of a war against a Muslim nation that George Bush characterized as a crusade. What we have here, Keith, is a confirmation from insiders at Blackwater that, in fact, Eric Prince did have a neo-crusader agenda and, most explosively, may have murdered or facilitated the murder of individuals that, that were intending to or did cooperate in the federal government's criminal investigation of Blackwater. This is deadly serious. All right, to the murder in a second, but you mentioned something in here that strikes an obvious question. How could the Bush administration, the State Department, have missed this crusader element here or was that uh, what they were looking for uh, missed it i yeah. think it was a it was considered a plus in the uh, in the bush white house remember keith what we had here was the bush administration essentially create a force that acted as a, an armed wing of the administration mm -hmm. not subject to the military command not subject to the uniform code of military justice that reported directly to george bush's secretary of state and then to the president these were his men his private force in baghdad and the allegations that they were running around shooting iraq as part of a war to eliminate Islam globally, as is actually what one of these individuals said, uh, is, uh, is extremely disturbing to anyone who believes in any semblance of constitution, law, or human rights. Some specifics, if you, if, to what you know about the use, this is strong term murder in court documents. This is under oath. This is not somebody throwing something up against a wall to see if it'll stick. Are we talking about the, something related to the 2007 Baghdad massacre or something here? It's, it's unclear, but this is what I, I'll tell you what I do know about this, Keith. Uh, the fact of the matter is that these individuals uh, in these sworn depositions uh, provided those depositions to lawyers, Susan Burke and the Center for Constitutional Rights, that are mm -hmm. suing Blackwater on behalf of Iraqis killed uh, by Black what are operatives in Iraq. They're suing them in civil litigation. What, what we do know is that these same individuals say that they gave this identical information to the federal government, one of them in grand jury testimony, as part of the ongoing criminal investigation. When I called the Justice Department and asked specifically, are you investigating Eric Prince on allegations that he was involved with murder, the Justice Department interestingly said that they would not confirm uh, or deny any actions that they may or may not be taking against uncharged individuals. Uh, Eric Prince, according to the lawyers suing Blackwater, could be eligible for murder charges in both Virginia and the state of North Carolina under existing law. That's the argument they're making in their motion that was filed late last night in the Eastern District of Virginia. Jeremy Scahill, who has been the watchdog on Blackwater and now is the uh, of the nation uh, who brought this story to everyone's attention today. Great thanks for doing so and great thanks for coming in. Today. Thank you.